Hi, Steve here from Post Processing Mastery, and in this High Pass Filter Photoshop tutorial, I'm showing you how to use the High Pass Filter to sharpen your images. But I'm going to go an extra step and show you something that you might not have seen before, which is to add, well, I'm not going to spoil the surprise, but it, it's to add a, an extra step that removes the halos that this technique can normally create. So remember, if you like this video, then give it a thumbs up, give it a like to let me know so I can keep making more and subscribe to the channel and as well you can hit the little bell notification symbol that looks like this and YouTube will then notify you every time I publish a new video. So if you're new to luminosity masking then you might want to download my intro to luminosity masking PDF. I'll put a link in the video uh, description just down there and also if you want to get a copy of the luminosity masking panel that I mentioned towards the end of the video then you can go to luminositymaskingpanel.com and I'll also put a link in the description below. So yeah, I think that's all I wanted to say before we get this tutorial started. So with that said, let's get on with it. All right, so I've picked an image here that's got lots of detail and texture in it, uh, which just happens to be the uh, peak of Cradle Mountain in Tasmania. And uh, yeah, so what I'm gonna show you is, uh, well, the first part is gonna be pretty much the standard way that me or anyone else will show you how to use the high pass filter to do some sharpening and detail increase in uh, in your images. So I'll just run through that part first and then afterwards I'll just show you the uh, the extra thing that I really wanted to show you which is like the main point of this video today. So the first thing to do in this process is duplicate your background layer or create a merged copied layer by going uh, via the edit or sorry the select all and then edit copy merged and then edit paste. So that gives you this pixel copied layer um, on top of your other layers. And then we need to run the high pass filter, which you'll find under the filter menu, other, and then high pass. Now here, what I'm gonna do in this demonstration is actually exaggerate the amount of sharpening and detail increase, um, just so that it actually comes through in the video, because by the time that the video gets compressed and uploaded to the web, um, you know the detail probably gets a little bit lost so I'm just going to uh, slide this radius value up to maybe around five now you normally wouldn't want to do any more than say two or three depending on the size of your um, you know depending on the resolution of your image um, actually I'll go to like six or s something like this um, just so that we can really see uh, the main issue with this sharpening method and that is that it creates uh, halos around some of the edges in your image. So like I said on a lower value those halos are still going to be there um, but you know it's not going to come across in the video so yeah, I'm just going to bump this up to around about six just so that we can really see those halos. I'll click OK and then the next step of this process is to change the blend mode to overlay. Right, so we've now got this background copy. So we've got this high pass that it looks sort of just gray and weird in the layers panel over here. And it's in overlay blend mode. And if I toggle this off and on, you'll see that the detail in the rocks there really starts to kind of pop because it's added that, uh, that extra contrast in those areas. So this is before, it's a bit soft. This is after a lot more detail. It's actually way too much. Uh, it's way too crunchy and contrasty because I've gone higher on that high pass value than I normally would. Right. So this is, a, you know, this is the point at which um, you know 90% of tutorials and uh, whatnot will actually go um, in teaching you this particular sharpening method. However, whether they're completely obvious or not you're normally going to end up with like bright halos around the edge of your uh, of your objects. So just like when I was creating this uh, high pass layer, just sliding that filter up and down, you could see the halos um, in that high pass layer before I turned it into uh, or before I changed it to overlay blend mode. Those halos are still there. They're not completely obvious to the eye, but they're probably going to turn up when you least want them to later on if you ever come to print an image or um, resize it uh, or view view the image large. There's all sorts of different uh, scenarios in which these halos can actually crop up when, uh, when you weren't expecting them. So what I'll do 
is create a layer mask that's going to isolate those halos and mask them out specifically. The way that we're going to do that is to create a luminosity mask. Now, if you're brand new to luminosity masking, then it's probably worth you downloading my uh, intro to luminosity masking and uh, well there's a link in the video description just below this video um, so you know if you're brand new to luminosity masking then you can either you know go ahead and get started learning that just so that you kind of understand the process a bit more or if you just follow these steps and just can remember these steps i'm about to show you one by one and just do exactly the same thing every time then you'll be able to follow this process without necessarily understanding exactly what's going on, but at least you'll be able to do it. So um, yeah, the first thing I'll do, I'll just literally run through the process. And if you do, if you are familiar with luminosity masking, then this will make sense to you. If not, then just follow along. So over into the channels panel. On a Mac, I'm gonna hold Command. On a PC, that would be Control on the keyboard and click the RGB channel. And then I'm gonna hit the save selection as channel button down here. Now I'm going to take a look at the uh, alpha one channel that is just created from that. I'm going to deselect the selection, so command or control D. And now I'm going to invert the alpha one mask by pressing command or control I. So what this shows us is um, kind of a weird inverse black and white version of our image where the uh, the brightest parts of the image are actually the darkest parts in what we're looking at now and so the nature of a halo being brighter than the object that it's surrounding in this view that should kind of happen in reverse so we've got like a dark halo so it's kind of making the top of this mountain look like it's got like a drop shadow effect so that is what's happening it's not as uh, pronounced as it could be. So what I'll do is just intersect this channel with itself. So command or control, click on alpha one to load it as a selection. And then I'm gonna intersect it with itself by holding on the keyboard command option shift or on a PC that would be control alt shift. And I'm gonna click alpha one again. And then I'm going to save this new selection as another channel. So deselect and now have a look at alpha two. And so that's isolating the highlights a lot more than the alpha one channel. So um, yeah, we've got that drop shadow effect on the, uh, on the mountains there uh, still. So what I'll do next is load this into the layer mask of the sharpening layer that I just created. And what that's gonna do, because it's darker in these areas that are brighter in the actual image, it's going to mask those out so therefore masking out the halos so let's do that so command or control click on alpha 2 just click on the rgb channel just to bring that back into view back over into layers and because we haven't yet got a layer mask on this uh, high pass filter layer when i hit the add layer mask button with this selection active it's actually just going to load that selection straight into the layer mask and so now let me just toggle this uh, layer mask off and on by holding shift on the keyboard. And so that just disables it. And if you look closely, you should see those halos, especially if you concentrate around this area in the middle here, those halos are disappearing. Now it does have the side effect of actually reducing the kind of over sharpened uh, effect of this uh, overlay layer of this uh, high pass filter layer um, so you know that also does give you a bit more leeway to push that high pass filter a bit more than you would normally uh, but yeah so what we have here the net effect of this whole thing is that we have a layer now that's sharpened and added detail to those mountains whilst eliminating any halos that that process would have caused so if um, you know, if you want to go a bit further than this, uh, you know, if that's not quite sharp enough for you, then you can maybe just double up this layer by dragging it down into the new layer um, uh, button down here, and that will just duplicate. And so again, we've now retained or we've brought back that kind of over sharpened look to the main image, but without those halos again. So let me just show you the before and after with both of those now. 
So this is the original, and this is with the over sharpened but without Halo version. So that's really the uh, crux of what I wanted to show you. Now, you know, if you can uh, follow along with those steps, uh, that's all good. Uh, just something I will let you know about if you haven't seen it already. In my luminosity masking panel, I do have a button that does that whole process for you in one click. So let me just show you that. So let me just uh, delete these uh, sharpening layers. And if you open the finishes tab in my panel here, we have this sharpening method one button. So I'll just hit that and let it do its thing. And that thing just happens to be that entire process that I just showed you. So it just takes a second. So let's close the panel again. Now it creates it with a group. You know, it creates it as a group of layers so that we can then um, either mask the effect in or out of where we want it. Um, but we can just apply it to the whole image just by inverting the mask that it comes with. And so there we go. Um, I think this actually uses a different high pass value and the luminosity mask that it creates is slightly uh, slightly different to the one I showed you, but essentially this is the one that I created to, um, yeah, it, it works really well. This is the one I spent a lot of time actually perfecting the process so that it can do that whole thing in one and it's gonna look good on the majority of images. So if you haven't got the panel and you wanna download my panel, it's, um, yeah, it's a really useful tool for luminosity masking. And you know, apart from the fact that it just makes the whole process of making luminosity masks a lot easier and quicker, whether you're an expert already, or if you're someone who's new to this and just learning how to use luminosity masks, you know, it's gonna speed up the whole process no matter what end of the scale you're on there regarding expertise. Um, but yeah, it's got a bunch of other uh, yeah, benefits. So we've got a lot of light preset sort of uh, adjustments and color and various effects and the finishes here. Uh, we've got some dodge and burn um, tools that we uh, that the panel gives you. But you'll find this sharpening process that I just showed you here under the sharpening method one button in the panel. And if you don't have the panel, then you can just go to luminositymaskingpanel.com and you'll be able to go and buy that and I'll also put a link in the description below the video. So with that said, thanks for watching. I hope you found this tip and tutorial useful and yeah, I hope it's gonna help you create some nicely subtle sharpening effects and detail enhancements minus the halos that could have crept in otherwise.